Stearman flight is an honor of all of those who have served in our nation's military. The Stearmans are flown today by Carrie Harden from Starkville, Mississippi, and Mike Nevrick from Denton, Texas. The Yellow Navy Stearman was based at NAS Dallas throughout its military service. That's the Navy version. The Blue and Yellow Army Air Corps Stearman was based at airfields in and completed its military service at Briar Field in Decatur, Alabama. Initially, it was built as a private venture by the Stearman Aircraft Company of Wichita, Kansas. Lloyd Stearman was the designer of the predecessor of this airplane. And then through a series of mergers, acquisitions, takeovers, and then a monopoly bust-up, the company was acquired by Boeing Aircraft in 1934. This two-seat biplane was a mixed construction, and when I say mixed construction, this is what I mean. The wings were made of wood, and they were covered with fabric. The fuselage, however, had a tough welded steel uh, framework, but it was also covered by fabric. Depending on the engine, the Army Air Corps version was either a PT-13 with a light homing engine of 220 horsepower, a PT-17 with a Continental engine of 220 horsepower, or a PT-18 with a Jacobs radial engine, also 220 horsepower. The top speed is planned to be about 124 miles per hour. Now, our air boss, Wayne Boggs, has a lot of time flying the Stearman, and when I said the best... Uh, I'll say that. And that would be the cool thing. Now, being a primary trainer, uh, it still was a kind of a squirrely airplane, wasn't it? The Stearman, most airplanes fly the same. It's, it's getting them all off the ground that uh, can be dramatically different. The, the, the Stearman is a handful uh, in any type of wind conditions, crosswind conditions, or something like that. It's what is known as a real narrow tail moment, in other words, from the, from the tail wheel to the main gear is a short couple. Uh, it's got a real narrow stance with the uh, main landing gear. And, and so it's real easy for one wing to be picked up with wind, and then you get into a situation called a ground wind. And then a stirman, it can be very, very violent. Uh, and, and it's really actually in this fair ground wind, which is what uses the best to do. And you don't want to be doing that. Here they come again. The yellow and blue and army air corps coming to the yellow and the yellow coming to the yellow to the west. speed, a lot more power, and a lot more lifting capability for agricultural spray work, and in the airshow business, they are favorites of wing walkers. 
That's what they do with some of these Stearman bot planes now. They have special stanchions on the top where a person can climb up on the top of the wing or out on the wing and actually walk and ride and perform aerobatics while being flown by a pilot in the back seat. The yellow apparel name for the Stearman well, some Stearman owners claim this thing resulted from the allegedly, allegedly challenging ground handling characteristics that Wayne Barnes was just telling you about. But most World War II veterans contend that the nickname was more of a generic reference to the dangerous nature of primary flight training and the manner in which the Stearman obviously played a major role. At the beginning of World War II, flight training lasted nine months. With three months of primary, three months of basic, and three months of advanced training. As a matter of fact, the United States Army Air Corps and the later the Army Air Force had the A uh, had the PT primary trainer, BT basic trainer, and AT advanced trainer designations. During that initial squad training, each cadet had 65 hours of primary training, and then 75 hours of both basic and advanced training. During the war, each phase was reduced to 10 weeks and then to 9 weeks. Primary training was accomplished in aircraft such as the Stearmans we're seeing here today and also the PT-22 PT-23 built by Lion. And I think the PT-26 as well. 